basically you have the radius and the ulna both articulate with the humerus. Okay? And then it's a hinge joint, so it hinges back and forth like that. Okay? Then you also have a joint between the radius and the ulna. There's one on each end. There's proximal or superior and distal or inferior. Okay? And then that's where you have pronation and supination. So it's actually occurring right here. And this is a pivot joint. Okay? So you have the head of the radius. So what do you wear on your head? You call it a hat or you call it a cap, right? <coughs> so the cap capitulum of the humerus articulates with the head of the radius. Okay? And then you have the ulna right here. And that articulates with the humerus. And that's called the trochea. So you have two surfaces on the humerus that articulate at the elbow. This part where the humerus, that curve, that carbon surface there is called the trochlea, and then this is the capitula. Right, remember those from anatomy? Okay, so the head, radial head wears a cap, and then the ulna has the trochlea. So this should just say right here, uh, it's actually two joints, the radial humeral and the ulnar humeral. Those two together form this hinge joint right there. Then you have the ligaments at the elbow. So there's basically going to be collateral ligaments. Okay, those are going to go along the side of the elbow. Okay. So then we're going to call this one, what, what, what would be a good name for this? Lateral. Or also, what's this bone? So you could call it either radial collateral or, ulnar, or uh, lateral collateral. And then what would you call this? Medial collateral or Older cloud. Okay. And then those, the lateral one is, is off, off the lateral, from the lateral left condyle of the humerus to the radius. And then you have the annular ligament, which is what holds this radial head in place. It's like a U-shaped, just a strap that holds the head of the radius in place against the ulna. Yeah, it's like, here's the, here's the ulnar, so it's, it's shaped like a U, and it goes like that, and holds the radius, head of the radius onto the ulnar, okay. And then you have elbow muscles. So you have the brachialis, which is here across the elbow. Okay. That's going to flex the elbow here. And then you have the brachioradialis. So that's this one here. Okay. And then, what's this one here? Okay. Yeah, brachialis. Okay. So then the biceps is going to do elbow flexion, and it's also going to do supination. Remember, it has that part that attaches to the radial tuberosum. So then what's this one? Triceps. Triceps, right? And this is the long head that goes to the infraglenoid tubercle, and you have the other heads of the triceps, lateral and intermediate. And then this, what's this other little one here, anybody know? Yeah, and conus. So then you have triceps brachii. Obviously, it's going to be extension of the elbow, and then also it's going to do some extension at the shoulder too. And then conus is going to be elbow extension. It's also going to assist with pronation too. <coughs> So then in here, you can have the pronator teres, because when it contracts, it's going to pull it across like this. So the pronator teres. And then the pronator quadratus is going to be more here at the wrist, and that's also going to pronate. And 
And then you have the supinator, which kind of comes around the backside here and attaches over here and then pulls up like this in the supination. <coughs> so that's this one back here. So then, what kind of motions do you have with the elbow again? Flexion, extension, extension supination. So normal range of motion is going to be about 135 for flexion, or basically you should be able to bring your wrist within the fist length of your shimo head. And then extension is pretty much going to be zero, right? Some people will have hyperextension where they'll go up to maybe 10 degrees, five or five degrees beyond strength. Okay. And then supination, you want to do that with the elbow at 90 degrees so that you're not adding in internal external rotation of the humerus. Okay. So supination is like this. And then the way that I think in my and stuff. The way you measure range of motion is you want to put a you know, Bob Dole technique, right? The pen in the hand, right? Okay, so then you, you measure this as a reference and then you look at the angle of how far this goes. So which is which is more, supination or pronation? Yeah, supination, I'm going past 90. Pronation, I'm not coming quite even to 90. So probably we would change that amount on there, so coordination say maybe 90, supination might be 70 or 80. Okay. Again, it's not different sources of different books, you might find different normals. What you want to do with the patient, anytime you're talking about an extremity, a good thing to compare it against is the, what, what do they do on the other side. If both joints are uniformly range of motion, it's the same, then what might be greater for that person might be normal for them. Versus if you look at one side and they can do it, to, you know, they can only go this far on this side and they can do this, and then there's a problem, okay? So what's normal for that person? All right, so then, and this is something you're not, you're not this is only two steps, so you don't really need to know this. But basically, well, when you talk about conditions, you talk about conditions of inert tissue versus conditions of contractile tissue, okay? So, Inert tissue conditions are going to be things like, well, what, what kind of different inert tissues are there? Bone, 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 bone tendon, mm -hmm. not so much. Mm -hmm. okay. Ligaments, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So bursa, uh, and then cartilage surfaces, joints. Okay. Those are usually going to be injured by acute traumatic situations, right? You dislocate your elbow, you break a bone, something like that. Whereas tendon problems, I'll let the people that are talking about tendon subo do that. Okay, so we'll do that and then we'll take a break. <laughs>